Hello everyone, Dana Cole here. I'm excited to share with you all a new product that I have recently launched called Cole Art Backdrops. And today I wanna to talk about the digital backdrops um, of the different types that you can have and how you can implement these into your actual images with ease. It's very easy to do. Um, and I wanna show you guys how you can do that in today's video. All right, so let's get started. Uh, we're gonna go over to Photoshop now. And I have chosen this particular backdrop to go with this particular image. So what we want to do first is click on this image. I'm just going to minimize this for the moment and make this image larger. Okay, so we have this particular image. What you wanna do is go up to layer and duplicate this particular layer. Okay, so now we have our duplicated layer here. Now what you wanna do is go on over to um, your magic wand tool, which is right here. Go ahead and click on that. And you're gonna go up here to select subject. And it is going to um, give a good selection of your model, client, etc. And now she is selected, okay? and she is separated now from the background. So I'm going to go over to my um, layer here and I'm going to press on this particular one here. And I'm going to make a, uh, a mask. And then I'm going to press Control I and I'm going to invert that particular mask layer. So now it is its own. She is on her, um, her own. Okay, so now I wanna go up to File, Place Embedded, and I'm going to choose the backdrop that I want to use for this particular one, which was this one. And I'm gonna hit Place. Okay, so now we have our backdrop um, here, and I'm just going to extend it because I want it to go I don't want it to go all the way down. I do want to see the actual floor. So I am going to just move it a bit. Here, like so, okay. Um, okay, um, so I want it to reach where, right where the canvas is here. And I am satisfied with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and accept it. Okay, I'm gonna make that a bit smaller. Um, okay, so now we have this going on at the moment. So what you want to do with your um, backdrop layer, I'm gonna go ahead and click it and I'm going to right click and this um, will pop up and I want to click create clipping mask, okay? And there you have it. Um, as you can see, um, she's look, it's looking very fake right now. <laughs> so what you wanna do is go ahead and change your blending mode. Um, so this is where you can change your blending modes. There's many different ones you can test out and try to see which looks best uh, with the particular image and so forth. For something like this, I would probably use either an overlay or a soft light. Um, so let's go ahead and use soft light. And now, as you can see, it looks much more realistic um, than it did earlier. Um, if it's too much for you, depending on which blending mode you use, you can, of course, go to your opacity and take it down or take it up. It just depends on how you want that backdrop overall to look with your particular image. Okay, so this is how you do it. And this is one way you can use the digital backdrops, okay? Um, now, let's say you want to do a skinny canvas, which is very, very popular right now. 
Um, a lot of people are uh, layering their canvases on top of each other um, or doing a super skinny canvas backdrop or fabric backdrop in the front of a larger backdrop. And you can also do that with my digital backdrops. So I'm gonna show you how to do that now. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this. It's now you know how to do it this way. Okay, so we're starting back with our starter image. Um, I already have you know, her selected. She's already masked out. So I'm not gonna change any of that. I'm going to go back up to File and go back to Place Embedded again. Um, and maybe this time I will choose this backdrop, okay? So now we have this particular backdrop going on here. And what I'm gonna do is place it where I want it to be. So I want this one to be skinnier. So I'm gonna go ahead and make it a bit skinnier and maybe a little bit longer like so. And I want it strictly in the middle. So it's gonna be just like this in the middle of her. And I'm gonna press okay. Okay, so now we have this. And again, it's not clipped, so it's in front of her. So let me go ahead and press right click on this and create clipping mask. So now we have it like so. Um, and as you can see, it does look fake like this because there's no shadows going on. Um, and so it's looking a little bit um, unnatural. So let's make this look a little bit more realistic. Um, and we could do that by doing a few steps. So first, let's change the blending mode because I feel the normal is a little bit too much uh, with this. So I'm gonna take it down to maybe soft light again. Okay, so soft light is already looking a bit more real um, and adjacent to the lighting here um, and the, the setup, okay? But we're missing some shadows because if this was real, this would have some shadows, okay? So let's go click on our um, backdrop, digital backdrop layer. Let's right click. And now we want to go to blending options. Okay, and it will pull this up, okay? Now we want to go to shadows because we want some shadows here. So let's go to drop shadow. You wanna make sure you click it, okay? And if you look at the image, it's already put some shadows there. However, these shadows are not on the right side because if you look at the way the light is falling, it's coming this way. And this shadow doesn't make sense. So let's change this shadow. So let's click on drop shadow, okay? Um, the opacity, I'm just gonna scroll that up and down so you can see what that's doing. So that makes it lighter or darker. Um, I have the opacity at around 45, 47 because that feels normal uh, with this lighting look and the way the lighting was, okay? Now, if you want to change the direction of the shadow, this is where you do that. And if you see here on the side, it shows you where that shadow is going. So we want the shadow here because the light was above her and a little bit off to the side. So something like this is great for this shadow. And as you can see now, it's on this side and it's at the bottom. Um, so distance is just clicking this is how far it's going to spread and so forth. I have it on like 170, which is a good spread amount uh, for this particular image. And it looks a bit realistic. It looks more realistic, okay? Um, the spread I don't normally use, but if you click that, you can see what it's doing. Okay, um, and I actually might put the spread on maybe three, just a little bit of spread, okay? And the size, you can see how it's doing that as well. It's making it um, here, it's very, very sharp lines, which doesn't look very natural. So I like that size of that spread to look a little bit more gradient out, um, like so, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and press okay now because I'm fine with the way this looks. Okay, so now if I toggle here where we just added our drop shadow, this was before and this is after. Before, 
afterwards. So now we have that shadow going around. It's looking more like this actual backdrop was there. It's not a digital backdrop. She was actually standing in front of a canvas drop with a smaller skinny canvas drop. And that is how you can do this particular type of use of this backdrop as well. And I'm just gonna toggle on and off, on and off. I hope you all found this educational and now know how to use my digital backdrops with ease to make them beautiful in your beautiful photos. I will also be making these backdrops printed, fabric printed backdrops very soon, probably in a couple of weeks. Um, so for those of you who actually like backdrops um, in the studio or on set when you're doing your work, that will be an option for all of my designs very, very soon. Um, if you have any questions on using any of the digital backdrops, leave a comment below um, and I will answer it or feel free to email me at any time and I will answer your emails as well. I hope you all enjoy your weekend and the rest of your week and I will see you guys online. Bye.